and let us all that we can to build a better future. Shout out to Jimmy Dore. <laughs> She's one of Chicago's very own. He'll actually be here on August 7th for his show. But once again, uh, again, he's calling out the Democratic establishment for the typical frauds that they are. He's also calling out the RNC establishment. I talked about this in an earlier live stream, but I think it's only fair for our viewing audience to see this as well. Because look, at the end of the day, the DNC and RNC are friends with each other. We've seen firsthand how they act. We've seen firsthand that, again, everyone who donates to the RNC also donates to the DNC. So let's first pull up this clip from Case Study QB. Again, be sure to follow Case Study QB on Twitter and also follow his YouTube channel and Odyssey page. So here's Jimmy Dore, everyone. Let's play this first video. The conversation on the left revolves almost exclusively around identity, which is, in other words, me. Narcissism is about me. Yeah. But you kept talking about economics. That used to be the central conversation on the left, or in America, actually. Yeah. Why, why no more? Uh, because the establishment has learned how to co-opt identity politics to make to put the brakes on economic progress and justice. So they, the, so the joke I do, so if you want to, if you want to help, uh, I, I say if you want to help black people, nothing would help them more than uh, free college, student loan relief, and Medicare for all, and a living wage. You want to help them? That would be the way to help them. Uh, but Joe Biden comes in, does none of those things, but he makes Juneteenth a holiday. So do you understand what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, I do understand. So that that's they're all it's all signals, but there's no substance. We're signaling that we want to help the minority community, but we're not actually helping them. So that's what identity politics is. It's a big diversion. And the joke I say, you know, if it was 1860, the Democrats would be bragging about their first transgendered slave owner. And so what I'm trying to tell people is that when you vote for them, when you vote for somebody inside the Democratic Party, no matter what they say, no matter what they believe, they're going to go along with Nancy Pelosi. And Nancy Pelosi goes along with Goldman Sachs and Raytheon. So when you're voting for someone inside the Democratic Party, you're voting for Goldman Sachs and Raytheon because they are not standing up to those people. So the idea that we have progressives inside the Democratic Party, it's actually more deleterious to the progressive movement to have them there. Why is that, Jimmy? Because it gives people a false impression that there's somebody in government fighting for you, that there's one of the parties that are kind of on your side, and they aren't. And the quicker people realize that, that both parties are not on their side, they only serve the oligarchy. We are, in fact, in an oligarchy. Your democracy was stolen way before Trump. Until that happens, we won't ever have real change. But what about Ocasio-Cortez? She's on Instagram. <laughs> Ocasio-Cortez campaigned on a floor vote on Medicare for all. And she campaigned on creating what she called a ruckus meaning you have to stop being polite. This is a quote, you have to stop being polite. We tried being polite and it got us nowhere. And it wasn't until we started acting out and speaking impolitely that we even created the circumstance. All right. Go, 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 go. Yeah, that was, well, well, again, that was great. Well, well, again, first of all, again, notice that, you know, you won't hear somebody like that on ABC, CBS, CNN, or MSNBC. So people, yeah, that's the thing. People are going to hit on, hit, hit on, hit on, but hit at Jimmy Dore going, oh, you were on Tucker Carlson. He's a really bad dude. He says bad things. Yeah, we know. He's also the only person on television that'll have Jimmy Dore on. I'm sure Jimmy and Dore was all the progressive. I'm sure too. if Rachel Maddow was willing to have Jimmy Dore on, he would be on her show just as well. Yeah. And the thing is, is that we need more people to call out the fact that, again, the DNC and RNC are, again, friends with each other. And he, again, just a quick reminder, the 15 congressmen and women who were on the force to vote petition did not attend the force to vote town hall. They didn't even vote for the Medicare for all. They didn't even force the vote. And they didn't even force the vote for 15. And where are they now for the March for Medicare for all? Because they are needed for this. They ran on Medicare for all. But again, as Jimmy noted out, they're taking orders from the Democratic establishment. And, Let's, and just really quick, I also want to just pull into something else he said that's a big thing that we also agree with entirely. This is the problem with identity politics is that you can, you can want it to be whatever you want it to be, and that's whatever. But the output of identity politics at scale with the logistics, with the backing of the biggest players, who, by the way, are the ones who always win these, let's call them cultural contracts, uh, means that it's always going to be uh, a negative and countervailing because, you know, however many people that want to do identity politics in the way that maybe they think is right, you're always going to be outmatched by a far superiorly uh, armed, trained, numbered army of people, and you're going to lose the battle every single time, and you're diverting away the point of view on things. 
And it's it always comes back to economics. And like I've said before, economics is the is the trunk of the tree. And like you know, your racism, uh, 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 sexism, all these other things are offshoots off of economics. It is the driving factor, keeping all of these things in place. Yep. Let's pull up this next video, this next tweet again. This is uh, another portion of uh, Jimmy Dore being on Tucker Carlson. And again, he's the only one speaking truth to power. And he's going to be speaking at the March for Medicare for All event in California for his respective yeah. area. But where are the progressive Democrats? They're not speaking. Where are they at? Let's play this video phase. That's what she tweeted. So I'm just doing what she said. So I started to put heat on people like AOC and Rashid Tlaib and Ro Khanna and all the, the, the Justice Democrats and the squad to force the vote. And they said I was committing violence against them with my words. That's how scared they got. <laughs> Were you? That's how scared. You really telling them to, to do what they ran on? That's violence. That's how afraid they were. And all the things. So they had people write hit pieces on me in the Daily Mag, uh, New York Magazine, Newsweek, BuzzFeed. They tried to shut me down and squelch me. They made me trend on Twitter negatively. They, but they couldn't shut me up. And they couldn't stop me. And they don't know what to do with me. Because, again, all the usual. They have Wikipedia putting smears on me that I can't get rid of. CNN's calling me. It's unbelievable what's going on. Just a, a comedian, a pothead comedian in his garage. What you can do when you want to tell the truth inside journalism and politics. And you can create a ruckus. And I did. And so now everybody sees that those people are fakers. And they're corrupt. And the reason why I say they're corrupt is not because they take corporate money and do the bidding of corporations, but they're doing the bidding of their own career, right? Their own self-dealing. Yeah. So if I go along with the establishment, I'm going to get a book deal. I'm going to get speaking fees, and I'm going to be in Congress for at least five years, and then I get a pension for the rest of my life. That is corrupt, and that's why they're not pushing back. Because Nancy Pelosi could come in and crush you. Hey, we'll fund somebody in a primary to your left. Just like she did to Joe Crowley, AOC, right? So that's what they're all afraid of. They're afraid of the power of the establishment taking away what little power and uh, that they have in Congress. Again, speaking truth to power. And the thing is, these congressmen and women who ran on progressive policies, ran on progressive issues, these are the same people that are giving the Biden administration an A+, plus, or saying that he's beating all expectations. Remember, this is something that AOC and a few other progressives in the United States House are stating. They've said this before. And remember, this whole program about pushing Biden to the left, mm -hmm. that hasn't happened. We haven't gotten Medicare for all. They did not attend the force to vote. You think Jimmy Dore just woke up one day and said, hey, let's do force to vote. No, it's an actual plan. It's an actual tactic that progressives, DSA, Justice Democrats can all use. That even those 15 congressmen and women who ran on Medicare for All, they could have used it, but they chose not to. They even could have used the force to vote for 15. They could have done something like that. They chose not to. They could attend this March for Medicare for All that's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to be speaking at it. Jimmy Dore is going to be speaking at it. And numer numerous other people will be speaking at it. But where are the progressives that said that they were going to bring the ruckus? They're not there. I want to give Daniel a chance to comment, and then we, I don't think we have time to play the third yeah, video. Yeah, we'll skip that. Um, but so we're going to skip that third video. Again, you can see it in the show notes below, but it's basically showing how corporate media is acknowledging that Biden is not installing any confidence. Daniel, let's get your commentary. Yeah, so again, it's like the thing that gets me is because it's like, you know, obviously when I see Jimmy Dore doing this, I know what he's doing. He's trying to get a message out any way he can to a platform anywhere that'll listen because I think we both agree that just it's good to be on as many places as possible. Actually, I think the best place that I can possibly go is some place where people ideologically disagree with me because actually might, re if I reach a few of those people in that section, if Jimmy Dore is able to get like three or four people to go, huh, let me think about this. Let me look into Jimmy Dore. That's a great victory in and of itself. Um, I also think it's funny because uh, AOC and everyone will be watching that because they don't care what happens online, but they do really care what happens on Fox News, CNN, NBC. So it's a, it's a real travesty that Jimmy Dore has to go. If Jimmy Dore wants to be on mainstream media, he has to go on Tucker Carlson. And Tucker obviously is doing his thing. He's trying to sh you know get pro progressives to fight each other. We know that's his stick. It's also the only place that someone like Jimmy Dore can go. And I think you even mentioned a while back that... Uh, 
it's interesting how every time uh, Jimmy Dore or anyone goes on TV, it's always Fox, and it's always where all the progressives are going anyway. Because I'm sure, again, if Wolf Blitzer would do an interview with Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore would go on. If Rachel Maddow would do an interview with Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore would go on. They just won't have him. I also want to acknowledge, too, that Tucker Carlson has had people like Glenn Greenwald, Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, and so many other people, um, uh, Dr. Cornell West, uh, on his show. And the thing is, you know, if you're a progressive and you want to talk about progressive policies and progressive issues, well, then you're going to have to go on a platform where maybe you can reach out to the other side because it's Politics 101 to convince every single voter that you and your policies are the best for everyone's interests. It's yeah. Politics 101. And the thing is, we were also on Jimmy Dore's show. We were also on Lee Camp's show and Nico House's show and uh, Convo Couch and so many other heroic individuals who helped us out when we got censored. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that the whole idea of sharing ideas and sharing progressive policies is so that people can build a large coalition to fight back against this neoliberal nightmare that we are in. And the last thing I want to do or tell anyone is, oh, no, don't show up on that show or don't interview that person or don't have this person on your show or don't you dare go on this person's show. All we're doing is creating an echo chamber then. We have to exchange ideas. We have to talk to people. And we have to fight for that better future. No one remembers the fact that, again, that there were Republican, Republican voters that would have voted for Bernie Sanders in 2016 and 2020. Why do you think they wanted Medicare for all? Or is it at single-payer health care or other progressive policies? You think they just woke up one day to change their mind? Or is it that they agreed with what Bernie Sanders was saying? And the thing is, when Jimmy Dore goes on Tucker Carlson's show... He's sharing progressive policies, and the thing is is that he's reaching an audience, and that's what you're supposed to do, hearts and minds. But obviously, our congressmen and women are not using that strategy. They want to create echo chambers and also be pro-censorship. And also, I just want to say, like, I know a decent chunk of our audience considers themselves conservative, and we're really happy to have you guys here. Because, again, our biggest fear is to put ourselves in a position where all of our audience thinks exactly like we do, looks at the world exactly like we do. We want different people with different points of view coming together, talking together in chat with each other on Discord to make these things happen. We don't want the bubble to happen. That's the worst place that we could possibly put ourselves in. And again, it's like it's it's a the real shame in all of this is that Tucker Carlson, if we got big enough. I bet you can guess the only mainstream show that would likely have us on to talk <laughs> when we're talking about economic leftism. Absolutely. And so with that being said, as a final note, Jimmy Dore speaking truth to power. And if it makes people uncomfortable, well, you must ask yourself, why are you feeling uncomfortable? And August 7th, Jimmy Dore will be here in Chicago. And tomorrow will be July 24th, the March for Medicare for All. Let's make it happen. Let's be unapologetic and hold these politicians accountable. 